Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your ham radio Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. I uploaded a video a few hours ago, and it's had a really good response. Um, let's see if I can put that on the screen here. So it's had uh, 1,600 views. And um, so let's see what the comments are like. Okay, here we go. Here's a question on SWR. Um, he asks, what does the SWR look like with that coax installed? Well, it's going to look better than it should be. Um, if it's really lossy, the reflected power is also reduced. And that may look make it look like the uh, reflected power is... Um, much less than it really is. So if you're sending a pulse out and uh, let's say half of it's being reflected back, but on that way back, it's reduced by 50%, let's say, uh, which is possible. The SWR is going to look a lot lower. The reflected power is going to look a lot lower. So it may look like a one and a half to one SWR when in fact at the antenna, it's three to one. So lossy coax can make the SWR look better. Also, when you use uh, lossy coax, uh, which is supplied with some antennas, the SWR curve then flattens out because the losses increase. So again, uh, there's no advantage to using uh, lousy coax. Um, and um, Lee writes, Jim, isn't RGX recommended for up to 6,800 watts? Some of it is. But some manufacturers now are rating it at a KW. Some have had it down uh, at 1,500 watts. Okay, I'm not going to show the, what website this is from, but um, let's just quickly look at the product description. It says it's RG8X Mini 8 Low Loss. And then um, down the page... It says power handling, 1,000 watts at 30 megahertz, 1,500 watts SSB. Since this is a, um, a website of CB equipment, it says, I think, 1,000 watts AM, 1,500 watts single sideband. Um, let's look at antennas. A CB antenna and it's got a welded coil so there's a weld no there's, there's another one. <laughs> this gets better uh, there's another weld and its frequency range is 26 to 30 megahertz um, power handling in watts 20 kW <laughs> and it's a CB antenna uh, and you can get this 20 kW antenna for just $85, plus shipping, I think. And it weighs a um, couple of pounds. It's called a K40. Yeah, there we go, 20,000 watts. Um, it's funny because there's um, there are versions of this antenna, and it's supplied with um, RG58. <laughs> so how long do you think RG58, or for that matter, coax connector would last at uh, 20 kW um, AM? <laughs> not not for very long. Okay, Don writes, and Don's a good friend. Uh, Don writes, sorry to hear about the amp. My amplifier blew up uh, in doing the test. I know you can make the repairs, but a shame that the coax caused the repairs. Yeah. I have stopped using 8X in favor of uh, 400. Probably means uh, uh, a 400 type of coax. All of the coax is... Uh, of the BU, oh, 8U variety, okay. I have cataracts and it's tough to read. Currently, 
he uses a brand of Hyperflux that I'm not familiar with. But um, I know Don has done some research on that subject. Um, Buzzsaw writes, write and check the PL259s before using. Yes, sir, that's correct. PL259s and reducers, I bought 25 sets for, from a large chain. The salesperson told me they were great uh, and as good as Amphenol and $3.40 a piece. So we ordered 25, over 100 bucks. They came in and stayed on the shelf upon opening. He found that the PL 259s in the sleeves, um, the threads are wrong. I've seen that too, where, believe it or not, the thread on the coax connector is not the correct thread. And uh, for the life of me, I don't know how that happens. I, I have a suspicion that the, the reducers came from one part of a country and the PL 59 came from another. So, um, the threads were different because they weren't manufactured in the same plant. I don't know that. I'm just guessing. Uh, let's see what else is here. All right. Uh, Doug writes, one of the very first pieces of advice I was given was never use anything smaller than 0.4. Uh, he means 0.4 inch diameter, and that would be uh, uh, RG8, RG213, LMR400, um, and, and bigger. Several people told me about chasing a radio problem only to find out it was the economical coax. Yep, I've done that too. They said uh, they uh, they said advice number two. Oh, advice number two was the connectors. Advice number two was connectors. Only by real name brand connectors. There are some connectors made by companies that you wouldn't know that are excellent. So, um, and if it's sold by a reputable, reputable dealer like DX Engineering, you're gonna be okay. They're not, DX Engineering is not gonna sell you junk. Um, and number three, of course, was stay away from Chinese. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do, cheap radios. I was told more than once that if you can afford a decent radio rather than buying junk, let me, if you can't, uh, let me loan you one. Yeah, hams are, are good about loaning out something if uh, if somebody needs it. And um, Robert Young, uh, sorry to hear about your amp. The table I have shows RG8X at a maximum of 350 at HF 30 megahertz and only 80 watts at UHF. And I wouldn't use it at UHF at all. Um, it depends on the duty cycle and how they measure it. Uh, so 350 watts maybe is a uh, constant transmitting a carrier like an AM station and uh, maybe seven, 800 watts for a single sideband. Kevin writes, should use a balanced feed line when using an RF amplifier. Sadly, any coax is going to break down with power. That's not true. Skip the basics and use balanced feed lines. That's um, that's a good point. And gain the ability to use multiband on the same antenna provided. Um, you have it like 160 meters or 80 meters. What he's talking about is true to a point. And that point would be um, if you use a, uh, parallel wires, a balanced feed line, an antenna tuner, you can get just about anything at the end of that to tune within reason. Um, he makes the comment that uh, any kind of coax is going to break down. That is not true. If you buy the 400 Max from uh, DX Engineering, I'm using a coax that is 7 eighths inch diameter. Uh, it's not going to break down. It's darn near bulletproof. The uh, sample of the, um, where did I put it? Uh, it's pro here it is. The sample of the um, uh, coax I got from uh, DX Engineering, and I'll, I'll open this up, uh, cut it open. But just looking at um, the end of it, I don't have my coax strippers here. Um, so I'm looking at the jacket, and the jacket on this stuff is really good. In fact, 
it's hard as nails and and i think that's a good thing i i i would bet money it's uh direct and okay for direct burial um it looks like that kind of jacket and so how is it that uh, they have such a good coax well as it turns out there are uh places houses cable houses that will make any cable that you want and they'll make it just about any way that you want and they'll put any label on it that you want uh, just like that gray stuff so I've had that done I had cable made I had my company name put on it and on that cable I used uh, RG58 because that was a standard that they had and uh, at the time I don't know if it's true today or not RG8X did not have any kind of standard industry standard that I could depend on um, again I've got the wrong strippers um, this is really tough stuff with the right stripper I think it would be okay but I've got the wrong one um, all right let me get a stripper off I'm gonna grab a stripper didn't sound right did it I'm gonna get a stripper <laughs> I'm gonna get us. I'm gonna get a stripper. Now it doesn't sound right either. Be right back.